this video, we will go over the drive cycle for removing a 2012 to 2016 Super Duty from the exhaust fluid system fall mode, also known as engine idle mode. As shown in the owner's manual, the messages that will appear in the instrument cluster indicating that the vehicle is in an engine idled state are highlighted. Additionally, in the drive cycle procedure, which we will visit later on, more examples of possible messages are shown. The vehicle will enter engine idle mode under a couple different conditions. The first is if the diesel exhaust fluid is low or empty and the vehicle is still driven, it will eventually enter the engine idle mode. The second is if a fault is detected in the selective catalytic reduction or SCR system. In either case, the fault detected in the system needs to be resolved before attempting to remove the vehicle from the engine idled mode. If there are any DTCs setting in the PCM or the diesel exhaust fluid is still low, you will be unsuccessful in removing the vehicle from an idled state. Once the root cause has been addressed and you are ready to perform the procedure, you first need to verify whether the vehicle is a pickup, also referred to as wide frame, or a chassis cab, referred to as narrow frame. This can typically be done with a visual inspection of the vehicle, however, if you are unsure, Look at the third letter of the VIN. If the third letter is a T, it is a pickup. If the third letter is a D, it is a chassis cab. Once you have verified whether the vehicle is a wide frame or narrow frame, navigate to the PCED tab, 6.7 liter diesel, section two, drive cycles, exhaust fluid system fault procedure. Ensure that when you are looking at the procedures, you are performing the correct one for the vehicle that you are working on. Before starting the procedure, verify that there are no DTC setting relating to the SCR or exhaust systems as mentioned previously. In addition, if you have a 2013 to 2015 vehicle, reference TSB 14-0192. Vehicles between these model years require a PCM software update in order to successfully clear the engine idle mode. If the PCM software is already at the latest level, no further action is needed. Note, do not perform any programming unless directed to do so by this TSB. If your vehicle is a chassis cab narrow frame, skip to the time shown on the screen. Otherwise, continue watching for a pickup wide frame. Start the procedure by selecting the following PIDs. Select ambient air temperature, EGT 12 through 14, RPM, reductant injector duty cycle, reductant tank pressure, and reductant tank temperature. Next, we are going to verify the entry conditions prior to starting the engine. Verify that EGT 12 is less than 149 degrees Fahrenheit, 65 degrees Celsius. If the EGT-12 sensor is over 149 degrees Fahrenheit, the vehicle needs to cold soak until the temperature requirement is met. Next, look at the ambient air temperature and reductant tank temperature to verify it is greater than 23 degrees Fahrenheit, negative 5 degrees Celsius. If you are in a colder environment, place the vehicle in the shop until the temperature requirements are met. Start the vehicle with the transmission in park Increase RPM while watching EGT-12. Watch the temperature closely and release the accelerator pedal as soon as 194 degrees Fahrenheit, 90 degrees Celsius is reached. After EGT-12 has reached 194 degrees Fahrenheit, 90 degrees Celsius, watch the reductant tank pressure PID to ensure it increases to 72 PSI or 496 kPa. If pressure does not increase to 72 PSI, there may be a fault within the reductant system. Once tank pressure increases, with the vehicle still at an idle, monitor the reductant injector duty cycle PID. You should see a duty cycle injection pattern within 90 seconds of tank pressure increase. Once the rapid duty cycle is finished, which typically lasts around 30 seconds, continue by increasing RPM between 2000 and 2500 while monitoring the EGT-14 PID to reach 437 degrees Fahrenheit or 225 degrees Celsius. Note, 
you may find it difficult to increase EGT14 to the target temperature. If this procedure is done correctly, the message will clear even if EGT14 does not reach 437 degrees Fahrenheit. If the message is not cleared after you've reached the maximum achievable temperature on EGT14, a previous step was missed and the procedure will need to be performed again. We will now review the procedure to remove a chassis cab narrow frame from the engine idle mode. For a chassis cab narrow frame, the vehicle needs to be driven during this procedure. Prior to starting, make sure that the vehicle is in a location where it can be placed straight into drive and driven at 5 miles per hour. If your dealership is not equipped with an open enough location, you can lift the vehicle or secure the rear end on jack stands so that the driven portion can be performed within the shop. This is the preferred method as it allows for monitoring of the IDS. Start the procedure by selecting the following pits. Select ambient air temperature, EGT 12 through 14, RPM, reductant injector duty cycle, reductant tank pressure, and reductant tank temperature. Next, we are going to verify the entry conditions prior to starting the engine. Verify that EGT 13 is less than 149 degrees Fahrenheit or 65 degrees Celsius. If the EGT 13 sensor is over 149 degrees Fahrenheit, the vehicle needs to cold soak until the temperature requirement is met. Next, look at the ambient air temperature and reductant tank temperature to verify it is greater than 23 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 5 degrees Celsius. If you are in a colder environment, place the vehicle in the shop until the temperature requirements are met. Start the vehicle. With the transmission in park, increase RPM while watching EGT 13. Watch the temperature closely and release the accelerator pedal as soon as 194 degrees Fahrenheit or 90 degrees Celsius is reached. For a narrow frame, the vehicle needs to be driven during this step. Since the vehicle is in an engine idle mode, it will not exceed 5 miles per hour. As mentioned earlier, make sure the vehicle is either in a place that the vehicle can be driven immediately or the rear wheels have been lifted off the ground. Once the reductant tank pressure has increased to 72 psi or 496 kPa, place the vehicle straight into drive and hold the accelerator pedal all the way to the floor. If driving the vehicle, have an assistant monitor the reductant injector duty cycle PID for the rapid duty cycle. It is important that the PCM sees accelerator pedal input throughout the entire duty cycle period. Once the duty cycle finishes, place the vehicle in park and continue to the next step. Has a note regarding the injector duty cycle. When monitoring the PID, you will initially see a brief cycle of the injector. This is not the rapid duty cycle mentioned previously. This portion of the graph shows the rapid duty cycle that needs to be seen during this step. If the injector does not cycle rapidly like shown, within 90 seconds of reductant tank pressure increasing, a previous step was missed and the procedure will need to be performed again. After the injector duty cycle has stopped, continue by increasing RPM while watching the EGT14 PID. Increase EGT14 until the message in the instrument cluster clears and the vehicle is no longer idled, or until 437 degrees Fahrenheit, 225 degrees Celsius, is reached. Note, you may find it difficult to increase EGT14 to 437 degrees Fahrenheit. If the procedure is done correctly, the message will clear even if EGT14 does not reach the target temperature. If the message has not cleared after you have reached the maximum achievable temperature on EGT14, a previous step was missed and the procedure will need to be performed again.